HRC, 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 Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader Church. Shalom. 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 My name is Kosafo. And my name is Zakwa. And we are the Hebrew readers. Yeah, man. And we like to give all praise and glory unto the name of Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya. Yeah, man. The great I am. The true Allah I am. The living power. And praises unto his son's name, Yache Mishyaka, the Savior of the children of Israel and all the world, the anointed king of Israel. May he be exalted, and may his dominion be an everlasting dominion. We come to you today on the Feast of Tabernacles. Today is the last day of the feast, here in the seventh month. We're going to have a teaching at another time to delve into what it exactly means, but today we're going to discuss an uh, introductory discussion of what the scripture is about. You know, we like to seek all things according to the scriptures, and hopefully this is very edifying and and we all get to learn a lot from it, even ourselves, and those of you who are listening. So may Ahayah be magnified, and in this introduction, we'd like to share how we approach the Scriptures, according to the Scriptures. And in the book of Isaiah, chapter 34, verse 16, uh, we have instruction on how we are to learn of salvation. In Isaiah, chapter 34, verse 16, please. Isaiah 34, 16. Seek ye out of the book of Ahia and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. It was important what he said here first. He said seek. What was the definition for that word seek, please? It's H1875. A primitive root properly to tread. Or frequent. So to keep at something, to keep going at something. Usually to follow for pursuit or search. For pursuit or search. So we're supposed to be pursuing and searching the book of Ahayat yeah. continually. By implication to seek or ask. And also praying continually, asking for understanding continually. Yeah. Specifically to worship. So it's interesting with the word seek. So we go back to that verse there. Can you read that verse again, please? Yes, Isaiah 34 and 16. Seek ye out of the book of Ahiah and read. So study it. No one of these shall fail. None of his prophecies shall fail. Everything that he has written will stand and has stood already. Right. For example, he said he delivered us out of Egypt and parted the Red Sea. If you look into the archaeology, there's a documentary by a man named Tim Mahoney called Patterns of Evidence. Mm -hmm. But Tim Mahoney goes into the research that all the artifacts show that the exodus really happened. Right. There's actually chariot, broken chariot wheels and parts and fragments at the bottom of the Red Sea, mm -hmm. as well as over Mount Sinai in Arabia. It's called, today it's called Jabal Al-Az, and the top of the mountain is burnt black. Mm -hmm. and it's the only burnt mountain at the top. The rest of them are just fine. And when they tested the rock, they said the only way it could be that way is from intense heat. And that's exactly what described in the book of uh, Exodus chapter 19 and 20. Right. It's a mighty act, and so the evidence is in the earth, as well as us being in captivity. Right. <laughs> because according to Deuteronomy 28, right. we would get taken off on slave ships, that's right. and we'd be colonized, which has happened to us, as well as the aboriginals of the Americas and the islands and the Fiji Islands, as well as in Africa and Europe and Asia. So this, these prophecies are true. None of these things shall fail. That's right. Continue. Hmm. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered up. The Father's mouth commanded the things written in the books, since they shall not fail. And Christ's spirit gathered the words of the book together. Right. So these records are spiritual words. They're living words. This is what we believe, and we know it is true. But if we seek out of his word, we will gain understanding. There's a way to gain the understanding out of his word because many times people read the Bible 
people that say we read the Bible from end to end, right. and it doesn't make sense. And that does happen because there's a way the Bible actually tells us we're supposed to read it. That's right. According to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9, there's a certain way to gain understanding. There's a way to read it, and there's a way to apply ourselves to gain the understanding. Isaiah 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? That's important. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And Yahweh said in John chapter 7, verse 17, he said, If any man do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of Allah I am, or whether I speak of myself. So that if we did his will, if we keep his commandments, then we'll know his doctrine. Right. This is one of the biggest keys. We have to actually keep his commandments to learn of him. That's why it's so important to be obedient unto him. So uh, along with whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. To be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. He gave the parable of a child. Because when a child is weaned from the milk, this is a painful process for a child. Right. And drawn from the breast. This, it's very humbling to be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Because you, you're, going, you're getting away from everything you ever knew. Right. And that's why in the book of Psalms 131, he explains what it means to be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Psalms 131. Ahaya, my heart is not haughty, mm. nor are my eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters. So my heart is not haughty, so one cannot be lifted up in pride. We have to be very humble-minded, and that is actually the mind of Yahshua. In the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 29, he said, Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. So he is meek and lowly, not haughty, or having lofty eyes. As we see what he's talking about here, what did he say in that first part again, after that? I am my heart is not haughty, mm -hmm. nor my eyes lofty, mm -hmm. neither do I exercise myself in great matters. To not exercise myself in great matters, not seeking things that are above me, but what is given unto us. And in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, it explains what he's talking about. It says, the secret things belong unto Ahaya, our Allah. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Amen. We don't need to understand every single thing that is out there. Right. Firstly, we need to understand what is all important, the thing that was freely given unto us, which is his law. Because that is true wisdom. As well in the book of Sirach, it's in chapter 19, verse 24, where he speaks on this. Where there's much wisdom in knowing his law. In Sirach chapter 19, verse 24, it reads, He that hath small understanding and feareth Allah is better than one that hath much wisdom and transgresseth the law of the Most High. Therefore, that's why we, you know, we don't seek to, to know, understand things that are beyond us. The true understanding is. It's better for us to know the law and not be and not know every single thing there is to know than to know every single thing and not know the law. Because to have worldly wisdom and to be knowledgeable about things is not a bad thing, but it is not profitable if we don't know the law. Right. Hey, that's what he's talking about. He goes on in the second verse. This is the mindset we talk about being weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Continue. Or when things too high for me. Okay. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself mm -hmm. as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even as a weaned child. So there we see what it means to be weaned. What is, he said, surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. What does the word quieted mean then? So we can understand fully what it means in Isaiah chapter 28 verse 9 to be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. It's H 1826, a primitive root, to be dumb. To be dumb. To be dumb. To forget everything we knew. Right. 
This is what it means to be as a winged child, to let go of all we knew so that we can learn again. This is exactly what the actually was talking about. It, by implication, to stop. To stop the life we were living in right. and to re okay, we gotta start over. Right. And this is what he actually said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 3 and 4. In the book of Matthew chapter 18, verse 3 and 4, it reads, and said, Verily, I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child. The same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, so we see what he's talking about to be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. All right. So we go back to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 and 10. Now we have a, from scriptures and the precepts, we have a good understanding of what it means to be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Because we have to actually become dumb so that we may learn. Right. <laughs> That's how we have to learn. We have to forget what we thought we knew and come with us. Clear slate, open humble, mind, humble yourself, humble ourselves. We know nothing. What does the scripture say? Teach us. Right. This is how we approach it. And it, it, it it's his word, so it works. That's right. Isaiah 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Or whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. So this is how we actually learn. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Yes. That's why we went from the book of Isaiah to seek understanding in the book of Psalms. Right. And in understanding the book of Psalms, we went to the book of John. And in understanding the book of John, we go to the book of Matthew. That's, right. That's how we actually learn. Precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. This is the way to gain understanding according to the scriptures. And we see... This is what is going to save our lives. So these precepts are very important. In the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 98, we see how these precepts are going to save our life. Approaching the understanding according to what he said is going to save us. In Psalms 119, verse 98, can you read that please? Psalms 119 and 98. Though through thy commandments hath made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. And our enemy is none greater than the adversary, the devil. And we have example in the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 1 to 13, how the adversary got defeated just off of the commandments. That's what the Savior answered him with to defend himself from the wiles of the devil. The Lord, there's power in the word of our hand. Through the commandments, it makes us wiser than the enemy. Go on to Psalms 119, verse 100. Psalms 119 and 100. I understand more than the ancient. Because I keep thy precepts. The law is everything. As well as Psalms 119 and 104, please. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Through thy precepts we get understanding. Precept upon precept, line upon line, we get understanding. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, and Yahche himself is the way, the truth, and the life. That's why we want to deal in all truth, and therefore we have to seek understanding in his precepts. That's right. And hopefully this is what all people will do. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 14 and 15 shows why we must depart from all lies and falsehoods. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without a dog, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whatsoever loveth and maketh they lie. And that's why through thy precepts we get understanding and we hate every false way. That's right. And this we do because when it said in uh, Psalm chapter 119 verse 98, when it talked about it makes us wiser than our enemy, Deuteronomy chapter 4, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5 to 9, shows how this is our true wisdom in the sight of all the world. That's right. For anyone that's willing to do it, Jew or Gentile. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5 to 9. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, mm -hmm. even as Ahayim, Ahayim commanded me, that you should do it. 
It's interesting. It says that you should do it. The same way it said in Revelation chapter 22, verse 14, blessed are they that do his commandments. Mm -hmm. So we can already see there's a link. The beginning from the early parts of the Old Testament, even into the end of the book. It's saying the same thing. That's right. Deuteronomy 4 and 6. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nation. This is our wisdom in the sight of all nations. That's right. This is true wisdom of life. Which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. This is why we're supposed to be obedient and to be a light unto the world, as he said. For yeah. what nation is there so great who hath Elohim so nigh unto them? Elohim is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous? Of all this law which I set before you this day. Mm. Only take heed to thyself, and keep thy soul diligent, lest thou forget the things which thy eyes have seen. It was always about our heart, lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. Mm. But teach thy sons and thy sons' sons. This was supposed to be handed down from generation to generation. And our foreparents were supposed to teach us this righteousness continually so that we would never forget it. Praise his name for the opportunity to get it right. That's right. For us and for all nations. Mm -hmm. We see here in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. The same thing we read in Seek ye out of the book of Ahayan read. This is the same thing Paul was telling Timothy to do. Because Paul understood the law. Paul taught righteousness. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show thyself approved unto Elohim. And workmen that need if not to be a saint, rightly dividing the word of truth. We all have to seek. Seek precept upon precept, line upon line. Simplicity of heart to show ourselves approved, to be worthy. So may we be ever mindful of these things. Can we read 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17? All right. It's all these scriptures we need to understand it. We have to rightly divide it all so that we can have good understanding for, for ourselves now and forever. For the time to come, because his law is everlasting. In 2 Timothy 3 and 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of Elohim, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So, I is still gracious to give us an opportunity for hope to be saved by seeking the book of Ahayah with all our heart. Study to show ourselves approved and rightfully dividing the scriptures so that we be not ashamed in anything. Yeah. For all the scriptures are good for doctrine, that we can learn his doctrine, and for reproof, that we can have his reproof and his correction as a loving father that chases his son in whom we love it, mm -hmm. and be corrected in all things, and be led and instructed into all righteousness. And what does being instructed in all righteousness lead us to? That the man of Elohim may be perfect, mm -hmm. thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Thoroughly furnished. So there is a perfection that we can gain according to the scriptures. And growing up, even just in common talk with any man, they always say nobody can be perfect. You know? But that's not what our Savior said. Because right. our Savior taught, gave Paul instruction on what to teach. And Paul said we can be instructed and furnished that the man of our high may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And that comes straight from what the Savior said in Matthew chapter 5, verse... 48. That's right. Matthew 5 and 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which in heaven is perfect. So we see, perfection is attainable. We can be like our Savior. That's why he came as a flesh and blood man. That's right. It's interesting that even Paul knew that when he, um, when he was writing up to the Hebrews. Yes. He was speaking to the Hebrews saying that the sort of we are without excuse. In, um, in Hebrews chapter 2. Go ahead and touch on that right real quick. In Hebrews chapter, sorry, verse 6. Right. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 6. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou made him a little lower than the angels. Thou crowned him with the glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, and left nothing that is not put under him, 
But now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Yahshua, who was made a little lower than the angels, just like us, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of Elohim, should taste death for every man. So he came as a flesh and blood man, yeah. so that he could experience death just like we do, but without ever being wrong. He committed no sin. There was no guile found in him, though he was a flesh and blood man. For it became him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect. So we see how perfection is gained again as well, through suffering, the circumcision. We study and show ourselves approved, rightfully dividing the scriptures, using it for reproof, correction, for doctrine and instruction. All of these are purging processes, bring us into right. subjection unto him. Because all of this takes us away from the flesh. That's right. Hence, it would make us perfect like our captive. So we see it's amazing what he was telling us. And when he said, be ye perfect, even as your father in heaven is perfect. That's right. Through the suffering, through the dying to the flesh, mm. we can be made perfect. And so we seek, him, we seek his precepts for understanding and we hate every false way. And we will be found perfect of him and be just like him. That's right. Out of love for him and belief in him. Continue. Mm -hmm. Number 15, right? Yeah, 14. 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. That's us, carnal men. Right. The word flesh is sarks. In G4561, it says flesh and stripped of the skin, that is strictly the meat of an animal. That's food, so that's literally meat, right? right? By extension, the body, as opposed to the soul or spirit, carnal, this is purely carnal, flesh, or as a symbol of what is external, and or as the means of kindred, or by implication, human nature with its frailties, physically and morally, and passions, or specifically a human being, carnal, carnal. carnally. Just as much as we are as carnal as we are, yeah. he came and partook in that same carnality in every way. And we're going to go into a teaching on that. Yeah. Because every man is born in the womb of a woman, nine to ten months. Right. This is straight in the scriptures that we're, we're going to teach on. Because it's in the scriptures, this is why they took these books away from us. Because it tells about all these things. How all these things are it's naturally what each man has to go through. Continue. Hmm. He also himself likewise took part of the same. So he did the same thing. Came from the seed of David, from the sperm of David, according to what the Greek word means, down to Joseph, which was of the house of David, of the king's lineage. Hmm. That through death he might destroy him that has the power of death. The devil has no dominion anymore over us. But we serve our master, our head. Yachim and Shiaka. That means him is all salvation and all life. He is the spirit of life. Yeah. We have went there because of Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, when he said, Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. That's right. So we cannot think that, oh, he did something that we couldn't do. That's right. He did it to show us that we could do it. The understanding is we have to do it through him. That's right. We cannot do it on our own. Through him and through the law. This is what we go into Psalm chapter 19, verse 7, verse 7 to 14, and we're going to see that through the law, we cannot get to this perfection. Hmm. As we've seen, we've seen Yahweh said to be perfect. Paul told Timothy to be perfect. He's going to continue the book of Hebrews that tells how Yahweh was perfected yeah. through suffering. And here we're going to learn more about how we can be perfect. Hmm. And again, this is an introductory. Uh, lesson into the perspective we are approaching from what the scriptures say, because the scriptures are true. So we see in Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. The law of Ahiyah is perfect, converting the soul. Mm. The testimony of Ahiyah is sure, making wise the temple. We looked at how in Psalms 119, he said, how thou, through thy commandment, you made me more wise than my enemy. The word 
simple. What does the word simple then mean? The word simple is H6612. It says silly. That is seductible. Look at that. If through his commandments, no longer we be able to be seduced by the enemy. Right. His, his word is perfect and will make us wise. Mm. Continue. The statutes of Ahaya are right. Mm. Rejoicing the heart in the circumcision of the heart and being humble and seeking his righteousness and knowing that he is true and knowing that salvation is in him. It is a glory to do what is right. And that's what was spoken about in 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. It says, for this is the love of Allah, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Yeah. It doesn't hurt us to do what is right. right. It is a joy. And right. so you see, it actually comes from the same thing. Right. John, he knew the law. He knew these scriptures. Because he knew if you do it in love, true love, the commandments are grievous. Right. Hence, we are rejoicing to us. Right. We continue. The commandment of Ahaya is pure, enlightening the eyes. It would enlighten our eyes because according to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23, for the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs, and we see reproofs again, of instruction are the way of life. This is what would enlighten our eyes. It would cause us to see all things clear that we would work righteously. This is going back to Psalms 19, verse 8. Talking about light, enlightening our eyes. So we can see clearly when it's daytime, you can see exactly where you're going. Right. But when nighttime comes, there's confusion. That's why we have to repent now and learn His light now. The end of the world is at hand. Please, I hope it's something that we all consider for us to get it right. We go to. Uh, Back to uh, verse 8. Yeah. Psalm 19, verse 8. The statutes of Ahaya are right. Rejoice in the heart. The commandment of Ahaya is pure, enlightening the eye. Amen. The fear of Ahaya is clean, enduring forever. Now every commandment he's given is a righteous commandment. Continue. Psalm 19, 11. Moreover, by them is thy servant mourned. This is important. Moreover, by them is thy servant mourned. Because his commandments helps us know exactly what to be careful for, what to watch out for. It says in Psalm 94 and 20, Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? He frameth mischief, the word it means to mold. It comes from the Hebrew word H 3335. It means to squeeze into shape. That is to mold into a form as a potter. So the Most High has literally shown us. He's molded what sin is by creating the law. By having the law, we know exactly what sin is so that we can be warned and be admonished and avoid all attacks of the enemy. That's why Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 7 verse 7, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? Allah <laughs> forbid. No, the law isn't sin. No. The, the law shows exactly what sin is. They said, I had not known sin but by the law. Right. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not call it. So we see how that's how we're warned by the law. So we go back to Psalms uh, 19 and 11 there. Psalm 19 and 11. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Mm -hmm. Who can understand his errors? Mm. Cleanse thou me from my secret faults. Who can understand his errors? How can I know what I have done wrong? Mm. By studying the law. That's, right. That's why he said the all, all scripture in 2 Timothy 3 and 16, all scripture is for reproof, mm -hmm. which for doctrine, reproof, right. correction. That's right. And instruction in the way of righteousness. That's right. So how can I know my faults? I have to go into the law, study to show myself approved, yeah. seek out of the book of Ahayah, mm -hmm. strive in it. Yeah. And I'll know what I've done wrong. And that's why he said, cleanse thou me from secret faults. Show me your ways. David is praying, beseeching, show me your ways so I can be cleansed of all faults. That's interesting. Very interesting. But you know, we think we, you know, we get to one point. 
and we think we we understand and we got it. Mm -hmm. Then secret thoughts are shown. More yes. of the law comes. Yes. You know? Great. Mm -hmm. The law is for us to live. Yes. Everything in the law is that he wants the best for us. Yes. So, so everything is the best. So that's why the law is the best. Yes. True righteous law. Right. True righteous laws for all. Not just laws to benefit one and not the other, but righteous laws for all. That's right. The, the other nations, that's why he said this would be our wisdom among the nations. Because they'll say, what nation has laws so righteous and, and judgments and statutes so righteous as these? That's right. And these laws that were given were from the true Ahai. That's right. The true Ahaya that reigns on high. The most high, the Alahayam of Alahayams. The King of kings. This is the law that shall save us. Psalm chapter 19, verse 12. Who can understand his error? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Let it not have dominion. Whatever we've done, we're going to receive what we did in our body. <laughs> whether it be good or whether it be bad. Right. So we cannot be misled to think that if we have a free pass to sin. And that ties into what he said in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Hebrews, okay. chapter 10, verse 26. There's touching on Psalm 19, where he talks about keep me back from presumptuous sins. So when this tied in, so we can see how from the old to the new, it's the same thing that it's telling. Be mindful of these things. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Yeah. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignations which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Mushi's law or Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment supposed ye shall ye be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the son of Allah and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy man. And have done despite unto the spirit of grace. So this is the true spirit of grace. The spirit of grace was to cover sins of old. For remission of sins that are past. So that we can walk in newness of life. This is what his blood was shed for. So the grace that we're given is to get it right. Before it's too late. This is the grace for you that we have to get it right. Right. Continue. Mm. Oh, okay, For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongs unto me. I will recompense, saith Adonia. And again, the Adonia shall judge his people. This, this is why he's speaking to the Hebrews. We're going to be judged first. It right. says to the Jew first, then to the Gentiles. We're going to read. Right. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living Alejandro. Let's go back to uh, Psalms 19, verse 13. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Psalm nineteen fourteen. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. We know it's acceptable in his sight. His law. Right. So this is the mindset of righteousness. The mindset of Christ. To meditate in his ways. Seeking his righteousness in everything we do. And according to what is acceptable, what is a delight unto him, through the precepts we get understanding of that too, to know that it's talking about his law and knowing him. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 23 and 24. Thus saith Ahiah, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorious glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. True glory. That I am Ahiah, which exercise loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. Mm. 
For in these things I delight, saith Ahia. This is what he delights in, is that we understand and know him. And what does it mean to know him? According to the precepts, is in 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 to 6. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He said, here's in what you should glory, that you understand and know him. Right. And then so he says, hereby we do know that we know him in 1 John chapter 2, verse 3, if we keep his commandments. So now we see, now we see that's what knowing him means. Right. And continue there. He that saith, I know him and keep it not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. If we say we know him, we believe in Yahshua Mashiach, and we do not keep his commandments, we are liars. And we read earlier in Revelation chapter 22, verse 15, that there's no lying that's going to be allowed in the kingdom. So we have to believe in him and do like him to be saved. Faith and works. Faith in Yahshua Mashiach and obedience to his commandments. Continue that, and that's what he's going to clarify here. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of our hand perfected. This is how we get to perfection, by being obedient unto his law. This is the true gospel. It's all over the scriptures here. Perfection is attainable. Continue there. Here I know, we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk. He that saith he abideth in him, ought himself also to walk, and he walked. We say we believe in him, and we say we want to be a part of his body, his true church, the children of Israel, and the grafted in Gentiles. We have to walk as he walked. He didn't commit any sin. And we have to be like him. And his name be magnified. So we pray in him. Exactly why he talks about in Matthew 5, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees, you shall have no idea to the kingdom. And that's where we're going to go here. So we see here. This is our rejoicing in Ahaya. Our rejoicing is in Him, in knowing that we know Him. This is what we hope the Lord say be merciful unto that we have the opportunity to teach and preach. This is the true gospel. Jeremiah 9 24. But let him that glorieth, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am Ahaya. Which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things are delight, say if I yeah. So if we do these things, if we understand him and know him and rejoice in that, we shall be saved. And we don't believe we're going to be saved because we're Israelites. Right. We believe we're going to be saved by faith in Yahshua Mashiach and by obedience unto his word. Yeah, man. According to what he said, this is what we believe. And we know that anyone can be saved, Jew or Gentile, by faith in him. That's why we rejoice in him and the opportunity he's given us all to have eternal life. So it is not because we are Israelites, even though we have a great part to play, because we have a responsibility firstly as the firstborn. And so we have to get it right quickly. And we have to speak the truth sincerely and humbly. That's why we desire all people to repent. For the kingdom is at hand. And we beseech all people to, to do what is right. And be, be in obedience by faith of Yahshua, the Son of our life. He will save those that seek Him by faith and obedience. And with that, we have faith and keep His law. Yes. Amen. Yes. And we see this is what he actually was preaching in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, 17 to 20. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy them to fulfill. He could not have come to destroy them because they're all about him. All the law and the prophets was prophecy of his coming. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. And we know heaven and earth is still here. We can still look up and see the heavens and we still walk on earth. So one jot or one tittle has not gone anywhere. The law still stands according to our Savior. That's right. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach man so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. 
But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And his word is true. That's why we seek to do this thing with all our heart, and with all our soul, in complete faith and right. hope. Because he said, whosoever shall do them and teach men so shall be called great. And may his name be magnified. And that we may do all his word. That we may have a right to the tree of life and enter into the gates of the secret. And we encourage everybody, because it said, teach me, so we encourage, encourage everybody, Jew and Gentile, to do his commandments by faith in him. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So he was saying, exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, because in Matthew chapter 23, we see the scribes and Pharisees, they talked it, but they didn't do it. So we see the understanding according to the precept. We have to actually be hearers and doers. And this is the message that we believe in. And we're going to pause here for today. We're going through a lot of things. So this intro will make sure there's a good foundation of understanding what it is the scripture is saying, where perspective, where we're coming from. If we do what he asks us to do, we will be his people, Jew and Gentile alike. He will be our Ahayim, Jew and Gentile alike. May his name be magnified. Amen. And this is what we hope to do. This is what we hope. Ah, yeah, be merciful unto us. And let us be a part of his glory, yeah. a part of his work. Because it is a great thing that he's done to give us the opportunity to be saved. Therefore, we pray that he have mercy unto us. That we get to be a part of it, to be true Israel, and to help spread this gospel throughout all the four corners of the earth. Thank you all. Shalom. Shalom. Everybody, peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. HRC, 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 HRC. Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, church. 